Hello my friends and welcome. As many of the media resources say, for example here we have The Guardian, the Ukraine started the preparation operations before the main counteroffensive. Each day we see more and more blasts on the Russian-controlled territory. For example, today there were lots of the explosions in occupied Berdansk. It's the main port city that Russia uses as the supply hub. Also some loud banks were reported in Tokmak and and Melitopol. Plus today anti-Putin forces, which mainly consist from Russians, try to get into the Bransk region. Explosions were reported in Bransk itself and also, as usual, Belgorod. Shebekina was also under the fire. This is the very close town, the small town, very close to the Ukrainian border. So definitely it is the preparation of the future counterattack. Ukraine cuts the supply lines for Russia. And before I tell you how the counterattack will start in the current reality, let me shout out to the sponsor and also the partner of my channel, the Atlas VPN. Yes. For this month they have astonishing huge deal especially for my followers where you can get the Atlas VPN premium for just 170 per month plus 6 months for free. It is definitely outstanding offer on the market. With this deal I think Atlas VPN overtook many of the competitors. It is the best VPN out there and let me tell you why. Atlas also has awesome feature of the multiple devices support from the single account so I use Atlas VPN on my iPhone, laptop and iPad. I always keep it on to make sure that my devices are protected. Then I have some free time I would like to watch my favorite series on the Netflix platform so not only Atlas VPN gives me the permission to access any kind of series in my country which are blocked or not blocked but it gives me fantastic streaming speed. Basically, there are no any changes in that parameter whether Atlas VPN on or off. My friends, it was a game changer for me because before I tried many VPNs and this one is the fastest. So my friends, don't forget to check my personal link in the video description just below where you can get the Atlas VPN Premium for just 170 per month plus six months for free. This is the special offer for my followers and also it's time limited. So hurry up to join the club. So the start of the country attack, how it's going to happen. Actually, it's happening already. Three weeks ago, there was the advancement of Ukrainian forces in the Bakhmut area. The small country attack with the limited forces, but it sparked lots of the conflicts within the Russian Federation between Wagner army and the Russian regular army. Actually, there was the conflict before, but now it grown larger. We are in the situation where Shoigu wants Ukraine to take Bakhmut again to get rid of the Wagner forces. Prigozhin also wants Ukrainian army to advance to cause the loss to the regular Russian army. In that case, he might show that the Wagner army is the only successful power that Russia has. And in that case, he will ask for more resources and more everything, probably even the high position in the military. So just a few assault battalions did this great job for Ukrainian side. Also, last week there was the attack on the Belgorod Oblast from the Russian Freedom Legion. They attacked the Bransk Oblast before, around two months ago, just a small village over there, and they came back very fast in a couple of hours. But the advancement to Belgorod was quite long. They spent two nights over there, and Russia forced to send reinforcements to that region. Today we're gonna see the video how Russia used aviation over there. It is one of the most stupid ways how you may use the Suhoi Su-34, the brand new Russian tactical bomber. And also it's the fighter jet, it's a very versatile machine. So that operation was also successful, first of all from the media point of view, because one day before that operation Bakhmut was taken from 
Ukraine. Russia took the Bakhmut, but actually it doesn't change anything. They could be trapped there at any moment. As I told you in my latest video from the yesterday, Ukraine concentrated lots of the forces near to the Bakhmut city and for sure were capable to encircle that city. It would be very hard with huge losses. That is why I think that the operation over there was paused for the moment. Also, how Russian officials reacted to the Belgorod advancement. The Kremlin speaker Peskov said that they are deeply concerned about the case. It means that they are very weak. It means that we'll have more help from our Western allies. Now the issue is solved with the fighter jets and soon it will be solved with the long-range missiles. I mean ground-based long-range missiles like attackers. Plus, just to recall before those events, there was the drone attack on the Kremlin. And now leading media resources say that Ukraine is responsible for that attack. Personally, I also have no doubt about it. It was just a light boom, but it happened in Kremlin, so mainly it's the informational explosion for Russia. And how did the Russian officials react? Well, actually, there was no any major reaction, or firm reaction, you may call it. Again, showing that the Russian Federation is a very weak from the political point of view. Putin doesn't speak with people, he is in his own world. He speaks with historical guys who say that there was no Ukraine in 17th century, but on the same maps you may find Ukraine. And what is happening right now? Lots of the strikes on the Russian hubs, including the big hubs in Luhansk, also Berdansk, Melitopol and Tokmak. The Russian surveillance ship was targeted in the Black Sea. That ship was able to spot the Ukrainian air defense rockets, Ukrainian aviation and drones. And just remember the previous months there were strikes on the oil depots in Crimea and also on the Russian territory of the Krasnodar Krai over here and near to Kerch. As you can see, the preparation for the Ukrainian counterattack has been started long time ago. And the scale of those actions will increase from the Ukrainian side. There will be more drone strikes on the Russian territory, including Moscow. There will be more assaults from the Russian Freedom Legion or a Russian Volunteer Brigade or how you may call them. But basically, it's the false flag operation. Yes, there are Russians, but they use the Ukrainian and also American weaponry. That's exactly what Putin did in Donbass in 2014, where he said that it's just the local militia forces from civilians. With the Russian Freedom Legion, we may say the same stuff. With those attacks, with not a good situation on the front lines for Russians, there will be lots of the conflicts between different clans and they will be in desperate trying to solve all of those huge issues with the drones, with the Titan forces on the Russian territory, also the supply line cuts, etc. And that creates lots of the chaos for the Russian incompetent military command. On this wave, Ukraine will start the counterattack. I believe it's going to happen on the south part. For sure, some of the Russian soldiers will resist against the Ukrainian counterattack, but many will run because of the miscommunication of this stupid Russian big bureaucratic military machine. The Russian system is like an old dinosaur from the Soviet times. If you distract it at one place, you may target the system from another place. They are unable to focus on many of the issues. And now they do have lots of the issues. And that's why I believe that the counterattack will start soon because of the current events. And Russia tries to cause the same chaos for Ukrainian side. Each day, each night, it's better to say, they launch drones on Ukraine, rockets, and cruise missiles. However, Ukraine is able to move forces around and they are never under the fire. And there are some fumes coming from Shebekina. This village is very close to Ukrainian border in Belgorod region. And there are some different booms in the Belgorod region 
as well. Some of the videos I just cannot show you on YouTube. For that, please check out my Telegram channel. This is the Russian military vehicle Niva that was targeted in Bransk region. There was the fighting reported today at the border between Ukraine and Russia. Probably Legion tries to advance again. Ukraine officially asked Germany to provide the long-range cruise missiles Taurus. This missile has the range of more than 500 kilometers. Storm Shadow cruise missile looks very similar and has the similar range. But as we know, the Storm Shadow cruise missile may be programmed for the shorter range of around 250 km. Hopefully Germany agrees to send us those cruise missiles. More good news, Ukrainian soldiers went to Germany for the training on Abrams tanks. So there will be around 31 Abrams tanks delivered to Ukraine. The training program itself for our soldiers takes around 12 weeks, which is roughly 3 months. Alright, I promised you the video, but I cannot show you fully on YouTube, so for that please go to my Telegram, but I can skip and show you the screenshot. So here at the beginning you may see the Suhoi Su-34, the state-of-art Russian fighter bomber. It drops the uncontrolled bombs to target the Russian checkpoint in Belgorod. Yes, it's the old video dated from last week. Their goal was to target some of the vehicles in the area, those below Belong to the Legion forces and of course the buildings where the soldiers, the infantry were at the time. But the Russian pilots were so precise that they targeted the nearby field. Explosions didn't touch the vehicles over there. There were two of the airplanes flying, so this is the second Sukhoi Su-34. It dropped the bomb and the bomb went also into the field. You see this building? It's intact. The bomb hit over here and over here. So let me show you. This is the place of explosion and this is the main building building on the right, so very far away from the target. As you can see, those armor vehicles over here are intact and the vehicle that was over here also didn't got any damages. The airplanes were flying at the such a low altitude that they could have been damaged, but I'm not sure. Why not to drop the bomb from the very high altitude and they have the precise bombs that fly and target that specific point. Actually, they cannot fly very high because we have the Patriot systems in Ukraine. So the only way possible for them is to fly very low and drop the bombs like in the Second World War. And they used the simple bombs for that, like also in the Second World War. But they used them on the modern day fighter jets that are very fast and the precision, as you can see, is not very good. If you remember, the similar stuff happened in the Snake Island before the last year, then Suhoi's bombed that island and half of the bombs went just into the sea. So yes, this is the second army of the world aviation. While I'm recording this video, some information uh, was spread into the media resources about the poor medical condition or poor health condition of the Lukashenko, the self-proclaimed president of Belarus. He is now in Moscow and was delivered to the hospital after the meeting with Putin. This month Lukashenko got some of the symptoms his health really was terrible. He said that he was sick. But about his emergency condition in Moscow, it's hard to say because this information has not yet been confirmed by reliable resources. That is why I would tell that those are just the rumors for now. Not sure if this directive is true or not, we'll see it also. It seems like Wagner's are totally banned from the Russian media resources. This directive to the Russian control media resources say not to call the name of the Wagner forces in their news and programs. Why I think it could be true? Because recently Prigozhin gave the very long interview to one of the channels and the guy who was taking the interview was fired the next day. Many of the Russian military bloggers spread this video about the mighty Russian pilots and their airplanes. Just watch it. So here's the Suhoi, it goes up and lands on the air carrier. 
how it's gonna land like this and they say that uh, no one else can do can perform this maneuver obviously no one because it's uh, the video game it is so cringy i can definitely see the fps lagging in this game it's like it's clearly the game how can they spread this fake around ah oh, by the way russia has the air carrier but just on the paper it's on the long haul maintenance and it got fired two times while being on the maintenance and the very important equipment is totally lost and yet they are unable to replace it with something new because they are under the sanctions and the most sensitive and precise equipment is coming from Ukrainian allies, not the Russian allies. Zaluzhny published the video today showing the Ukrainian armed forces, Leopard tanks, etc. The name of the video it's time to take back what we have. Maybe it is the announcement of the future counterattack. Well, in the end it says join the Ukrainian armed forces, so maybe it's just advertisement. As for the front lines, there are no big changes for today, but soon they will happen. My friends, now press the like to this video and don't forget to check the link for the Atlas VPN Premium. You may find it in the video description just below. Atlas VPN is the best VPN out there. My friends, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.